So today is April 5th and it is 3.09 p.m. and we're here over Zoom interviewing today. My name is Brennan Hamilton with the UNI Museum and I will be interviewing Callista McCullough. Thank you so much for interviewing with us. So please state your name, your role as either a student or teacher during your time of being at a consolidated school and what years you attended school. My name is Callista Lachlan McCullough. Uh, I was a student at North Fayette um, and I went to school from 1980 to 1994. When were you born? Uh, I was born December 7th, 1975. Where did you grow up? Fayette, Iowa. Okay. What was your family like? I had an older sister who was two years older than I was. Um, a mom, a dad, and a sister who is 12 years younger than I am, and um, a little brother who's 15 years younger than I am. Okay, what are the names of your siblings? My older sister's name is Katrina. My little sister's name is Shailene, and my little brother's name is Bill. Okay, how far away did you live from school? When I was in elementary school, we lived in the same town. Uh, when I was in junior high and high school, I lived in a different town. Um, and we were about eight, eight to 10 miles away. When I was in junior high, probably about eight miles in high school, we lived about 10 miles away. Okay. And how far from elementary school? Possibly a mile. I mean, it was in the same town, so it, but it was just across town. What were some of your interests as a child? I liked history and art. England, London, uh, Ireland, horses, unicorns, traveling, Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, Did you like going to school? Why or why not? I loved learning. Uh, I loved seeing my friends. I was pretty shy, so that was hard. Um, so I did like going to school sometimes, but other times it was kind of difficult because I was shy. So what did you want to be when you grew up, when you were a kid? Um, I actually wanted to be an, either an archaeologist or a museum curator. Was school seen as an option or a requirement for you? Did your parents make Oh, gotcha. No, it was definitely a requirement. That was, that was not an option. We, we had to go to school. Like that was, that was definite. Um, went to school, went to high school, went to college. Yes. <laughs> What are some of your earliest memories or what is your earliest memory of school? Uh, my earliest memory is going to kindergarten and there was one of my best friends um, at the time and she hated school. And I remember her every day getting dropped off and I remember her crying like um, throughout the day, every pretty much every single day. And I, I just remember how much she hated it. and. I didn't hate it as much as she did. I really, I did enjoy school. And what did a typical morning before school look like? A typical school morning would be my sister waking me up and then getting ready. And then uh, my sister and I would walk to school and um, it would take us probably 15 minutes to get to school. And then we would walk to school and then would, that would be it. Did you have any chores before school? Yeah. We did, I don't remember them. What were your at-home expectations? To do our homework and to do our chores. What were some chores you did have? To see, dusting and vacuuming. I had to cook a meal a week, but I, I, I've never been a good cook, so that was all I had to do. Some yard work, but minimal. I mostly, for chores, I, I would help my grandparents more than I would probably do chores down at our house. My grandparents lived in the town where our school was, and so I would spend a lot of time at their house. I would help them out a lot, doing all the things that they needed to do. So, which, can you clarify which school you were talking about, and then also... Oh, which, sure. The junior high and high school. Uh, so, West Union, Iowa. Which grandparents? My mother's parents, uh, my grandma and grandpa Miller. What was your attire for school? Like, did did you have a uniform or a dress code? We didn't. In junior high, we did have a dress code. We weren't allowed to wear shorts. That was kind of a big argument that kids had every single year where the girls were 
allowed to wear skirts, but we weren't allowed to wear shorts. And there was no air conditioning and it was super hot. And so every single year, for as long as I can remember, I'm in mean, protest, the boys would wear skirts at least once a year to try to protest the fact that, that we weren't allowed to wear shorts. What did you typically wear to school? I typically wore pants, jeans, and a t-shirt or long sleeve shirt or sweatshirt. Sometimes a sweater. How did you get to school? I would always walk. I would walk from my house to the school um, when I was in elementary school. And then when I was in junior high, I would walk from our house to the elementary school. And then the elementary school um, would bus us from Fayette Elementary to the junior high. Um, And then when I was in high school, my sister or um, one of our friends would have a car. And anytime we were able to, I would ride with them up to the school. And when I was in high school, we had early bird PE, my friend and I, which uh, I had a really full schedule. And early bird PE was when they had PE at 7.30, I think, so that we could have PE before school started. Have PE and get that out of the way every morning and then have a full schedule. What time did school start? I believe it was 8.20. So you talked about walking to school with your sister. Was there a unique or distinctive way that you got to school? No, not really. Like when we were pretty young, we would walk together. But when we, as we got older, we didn't walk together really, which I think was better for her because I was pretty slow. <laughs> then I would meet up with a friend who lived about halfway from our house to the school. And then I'd walk with him the rest of the way. We lived in a town with, with a college, Upper Iowa University. And I would walk across the campus and sometimes that really scared me and I don't know why I did it, but I always did it. Um, My dad also, when I was in elementary school, worked at the campus and I would stop and see him sometimes. What was your friend's name? Adam McKay. Were there ever any troubles trying to get to school? There was one time that it was black ice and a couple of friends and and I were trying to walk home. It is very hilly. And we had to probably uh, kind of crawl most of the way home because like every time we tried to, to walk, we would fall down. And his name was Kalani Brown. We could just not get any traction. So we spent most of the time like just trying to crawl because we could not make it home. Can you describe for me the layout of your schools, both uh, elementary, uh, junior high, and high school, and describe what they look like on the outside and inside, kind of what you remember from that? So our Fayette school, it was K through sixth grade. And actually, we consolidated when I was in second grade. So before that time, it was Fayette was K um, through 12th grade. And then when I was in second grade, they decided to merge with North, um, and then it became North Fayette. At the time, when I was in kindergarten, we had the elementary school, and then we had which was a little school and then we had a larger school which had like a gym and I think it used to that was where the high school used to be but I think they tore that down and they just kept the gym and then it's like some of the offices so then our school they had two hallways and then the one hallway had K through second grade and then that went like this and then um, the third through sixth grade went like this and then in the middle of it there was the cafeteria and like the little, I think they did some gym in there, but not very much, but that's mostly where we ate lunch. And then we would go to the other building to have gym and music and art. So that was our elementary. And then we were bused up to West Union. And in West Union, we had, um, there was West Union, Hawkeye and Fayette. And we were all together and our junior high was three floors and it was a big brick building. So you'd walk in the door and then there was like a hallway and then right beyond that hallway was the cafeteria slash gym and there was a stage where that was and we would have our basketball games and that's where we would eat lunch and the locker rooms were down beyond there and then the classrooms were up on the second and third floors and then our high school was in the same town West Union and that was across town from the junior high and that was a big one-story building and everything was just kind of laid out in a square. So there was a gym and then there was also a, a cafeteria but they were two separate things. So in the other school schools they were kind of or in at least in the uh in the junior high it was kind of the same where we ate and we also had a gym but in the high school it was two separate places. What were some technologies that you had available to you? When I was in elementary school, we had electronic 
typewriters. And so we got to do typing class. And when I was, I believe in third grade, I had chicken pox and we had typing class and I really liked typing class. And I had the chicken pox and I missed a lot of the typing class and it was devastating to me because I messed a bunch of that and I thought it was awful that I, everybody else was getting to have fun and I was missing part of the typing class. And then junior high, we had keyboarding. I think that was typewriters to moving on to very preliminary. Uh, no, actually that was computers. And then in sixth grade going on when I was older, elementary, we did have a computer and I remember we did Oregon Trail and everybody wanted to do Oregon Trail and we would get to do half hour um, and we'd have to do it in pairs. When we were getting older, we would do Where in the World was Carmen San Diego. That was a big game that we got to play in junior high. As time was going on, we had just a few computers. It was a small school and we had a computer lab. The internet was 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 a thing, but it was dial up. When I was in uh, high school, we had I learned Latin via satellite, so that was something that was available to me for technology. Did you have email at that point? I think so. <laughs> I think it was junior or senior in high school, but I think I did. So when you arrived at school, how did the typical school day begin? A typical day in elementary school, we would come in. We had usually been outside playing until the bell rang. Take off our coats, hang everything up sit down and then we would do the pledge of allegiance then we would start our first class whatever that happened to be usually i want to say reading or then junior high we would come in after being dropped off from the bus get our stuff put in our lockers and then we had our homeroom and then after homeroom we would be counted for attendance and then we would go to our first class and then uh same thing for high school we would drop everything off in our lockers then we would go to our homerooms then we would go to our first class we always have start with homeroom and then we would go to our first class did your school offer breakfast in the morning i believe they did but i never ate it so i I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think that they did. How many students were in your graduating class? My graduating class had 69 official students. However, we did have a student pass away right before uh, we graduated. He had MS and they thought he would die when he was 13, but he, however, made it right until our senior year. So we were pretty devastated because we thought he was going to make it all the way to graduation and he he wasn't able to. How many students were in your school? Almost 400. How do you remember your classmates? Mostly fondly. Uh, I got along with pretty much everybody. I had a core group of friends that I was really, really close with. And then I just pretty much got along with everybody, talked to everybody. But I hung out, hung out with just like, just a few like really close people. A lot of the people that I was like the closest to were people that I had gone to elementary school with. Amy Corbin and Eric Ingersoll. Um, Jeremy Shannon. Those were the people from Fayette that I had known since kindergarten. And then there was Ann Browsey and Maria. She was an exchange student from Switzerland and she was a lot of fun. So how would your classmates remember you? I think probably pretty nice. Up until my senior year, probably pretty quiet for the most part, unless you were like super close to me. And then I'd say that I was, uh, had a pretty good sense of humor. For the most part, people who didn't know me would say that I was probably pretty quiet, but very nice. What were some of the classes that you took? Before high school, I guess it was just like the gen eds. And then in high school, I took Spanish and Latin and psychology, chemistry, algebra, algebra two, geometry, biology, biology two, government history, U.S. history, world history, art, lots, a lot of art classes, um, ceramics, painting, drawing, any art that was available I took. Gym because we forced to. <laughs> Did you have any favorite or least favorite classes? So my favorites were art and history. I loved history and English and I loved biology. Um, my least favorite was chemistry and geometry. I hated, hated geometry. Those were probably my two least favorite. What sort of school supplies did you use or bring to school? Notebooks and pens, rulers, calculators, pencils. That was about it. I mean, in old school, like we didn't have like the, the laptops and the <laughs> And the other things, the old. <laughs> How is your school day structured? We would have maybe four classes and then lunch and then 
a few other classes and then it would be the end of the, the school day and then we would have our extracurriculars, whether that be sports or speech, or there was art club. And then there, I mean, so there was different clubs you could be a part of. And sometimes actually the clubs met before school too, so that you could do um, sports and or other things. So like sometimes the speech speech met before class, which was nice so that you could do more than one thing because, um, and like with anything else in, in Iowa, sports came first. So the other clubs and groups tried to work around it that you could do as much as you could. <laughs> so I know that you mentioned that you had some music classes in school. Did you like music? Yeah, I, I like music. I believe I was in chorus until ninth grade. We had to start doing uh, individualized vocal lessons and I realized that probably wasn't for me. What was the typical music lessons like when you were in them? So like when we were in chorus, when I was in, in middle school, we would go in and we would all go. We were, we were separated into our vocal ranges and that was an alto and we would all sing together and we would learn our songs and then we would sing and we would practice and so we would have to go in um and have a half an hour of you singing the, the certain songs and then um he would critique you as soon as I found out that that was the thing that was going to have to happen I just quit I didn't even do it one time because I was super 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 shy so do you know if you ever used the fullerton music education program i do not know when you were in music did you ever use a radio recorder we did do the recorders yep okay uh, we had a whole section of that in sixth grade i know that when my kids were younger we bought the recorders but i i don't think that we bought them when we were kids i think that we just had some that we used and then we gave them back did you use any other instruments during music education or did the teacher at all we had uh, i believe like the xylophone and triangle and some other percussion things using and then when we were in seventh grade we we were able to try out different instruments and then try to discover which one we liked the best and then we were able to join band did you join band i did for, i did play the elbow for about a year and there were two of us who played the oboe. I switched to the clarinet. Did you have to take lessons for band? We did. We practiced on our own and then every week we would go in for 15 minutes to a half an hour with the band teacher and we had to do that during the summer as well. Did you have to pay for summer lessons or were they school provided or school function? I think it was school provided. Did you ever have to pay for music or your instrument or was it a rental? Um, I think it was a rent to buy. Did you ever do all state with band? No, not with band. Mm -mm. Or choir? No. Did you ever put on any programs for your school? We did band concerts. So you mentioned also that your school offered PE. Did you like? Mm -hmm. I did not. <laughs> um, I did not like PE until I was in high school. And then when we could start doing the early bird PE, and it was a lot less structured and a lot more fun, then I started liking it. But I did not care for PE <laughs> when I was kind of all arms and legs and I was pretty awkward. Some of the sections I did, like I liked the skating. I liked the floor hockey when I wasn't the goalie. I liked to do that. Uh, I hated the running. I had asthma, but nobody really knew that I had asthma. So <laughs> that was uh, pretty difficult. I did like basketball, actually. I think some of the problem was like some of the people who were in my class were kind of out for blood. They weren't in it for fun. They were kind of out to destroy you and they didn't care. Did you have a specific PE uniform or what did you wear to PE? No, uh, you just brought stuff from home. So shorts or and a t-shirt or sweatpants and a t-shirt. So there was no uniform. Was your PE class separated between boys and girls? No. Mm -hmm. Nope. Girls and boys together. How often did you have PE? We had it every other day. Did your school do the presidential fitness test or a fitness gram pacer test? Did the presidential. I think that's what we did. Did you have to run the mile then? Yes. How often did you do that? Uh, twice a year. When did you start having to run the mile? Near high. Good. We had to do um, rally days when we were in elementary school, which were supposed to be like super fun. And we had to do like relay races and long jumps and the 100 meter dash. We did that um, at the end of the year and our parents could come and watch that if they wanted to. I didn't. 
care for that either. <laughs> did you always have to take PE or did your school provide any other options? No, we always had to take PE. There was no other option. I know you mentioned that your school had some sports. Did you participate in any athletics? I did not in high school. I did in junior high. I was in basketball when I was in junior high and I was in volleyball for a year and then I was uh, the manager. What was that like? It was intense for like the basketball and that's the reason I would. Our coach was very hardcore. She didn't, I mean, not that sports necessarily needs to be fun all the time, but she would have you run what was called killers and you had to run until you were basically sick like every single practice and it just it got to the point where it wasn't worth it absolutely wasn't worth it so I know that you mentioned that you did Latin and Spanish um were there Mm -hmm. any other foreign language classes that your school offered they offered German and there was also those in person so Spanish and German were in person and then there was satellite one I think it was Japanese how did being in satellite class differ from being in person well we weren't supervised (laughs) That was one. We watched some MTV while we were, uh, should have been watching Latin, (laughs) but uh, there were four of us in that class. So there were two um, Spanish exchange students, and then there was um, myself and another, see, I was a senior. I was a senior, and then there was a junior uh, boy. We did watch some MTV instead of what we should have watched. (laughs) So I know you mentioned your school did offer art classes. Did you need to purchase any additional art supplies or were those provided by the school? There were some times that we needed to purchase some uh, additional art supplies. We made bracelets. We did some jewelry making and so we had to purchase metal. Um, I mean it was mostly provided but there were some times that we would have to supplement. They were pretty good about making sure that they did supply most of the things for us. So what were some of the things that you did or created in art? I did some batiks and um, a lot of pottery, jewelry, so uh, rings and bracelets, paintings, drawings, sculptures. Did your school offer any special education classes or on the other side, gifted classes? Yes, (laughs) not so much gifted, but there were some students who were special needs that did go to our school. They weren't integrated with us per se, but. Did your school have a guidance counselor? Yes. Did you ever have to visit them? Uh, When I was in high school, we did have, we all had to, because we had to talk about um, what we were going to do with our future. Was their job primarily focused on helping students apply for colleges or were they more of an on-site therapist or a mixture? I would say his job was mostly to help us apply for colleges. Was mental health at all discussed in your class? For some of us who took psychology, but it wasn't uh, anything that was really brought up that was not really something that was discussed. Um, Did you have a shop class, sewing class, food or cooking class, or like a homemaker class? Yes. Did you take part in all of those? Yes. What was one of the most interesting things that you either built or made? My favorite probably was the woodworking class. I really enjoyed doing that. I did it a lot in junior high and I took one class in high school, but like I said, I was like super shy and I was the only girl. And so I, I got, I don't know, I felt really uncomfortable. And so I I quit. Cooking class, we did that in junior high. In junior high, we also did baby. We had to carry the baby around and pretend to be married and have a budget. And we had a job and then we had to do like the can of life where we would have like a coffee can and then we would have to draw a situation that would happen to us. Like we had twins or one of us lost our jobs and then we'd have to adapt to that. And if we had bad grades, (laughs) then we would, we wouldn't have a job <laughs> so we would we would lose our jobs were the babies oh. you used were they like plastic toy babies or was it more like the whole idea of a sugar baby they were cloth babies that were full of bird seed so if there were any holes in it it would leak bird seed <laughs> and the the boys in the class were not necessarily very careful with the bird seed babies so they would throw their babies the babies around and it's not very good to the babies those were our babies at least that year did your school teach driver's ed or did you learn to drive from a private company our school taught driver's ed did you take that during the school year or was it a summertime event it was a summertime class so what were your teachers like we had um one teacher uh his name was mr geyer and he was wonder. I thought he was really funny. I thought he was good. So we would get up, at least I did. I had a, like a super early drive time and there were 
four of us, I believe, who drove together with Mr. Geyer a couple times a week. We would drive around. Um, we would each get a half an hour. And then at the end of whatever specified time, we would have to drive to Waterloo, which was the big town, and then uh, drive around there and um, we also, some of the things that we had to do was check our oil, change a tire. So it wasn't just like driving. We had to do things that would come up when you were driving. So in general, when you were at school, what were your teachers like? They were good. <laughs> a lot of the teacher, teachers were the same teachers that my parents had. My parents graduated from the same school. So, um, and a lot of my aunts and uncles graduated from that school. So they knew our families. So that was an interesting thing. I can't complain really about. There were, you know, of course, there's teachers that you're not going to like, but for the most part, I really liked my teachers. And of course, you have your favorites. I loved my English teacher and she was the teacher that I went to Allstate for speech with. So that was fun. And it was her first year of teaching uh, speech anyway. And she promised that if we went to to all state that we could stay at the embassy suites in Des Moines and and we did. What was her name? Mrs. Stratty, Mary Stratty. She was wonderful. Mr. Peterson taught history and I loved the way that he taught history because it wasn't just like it wasn't just like from the book. He also taught like really fun obscure facts too. And now this is all in high school. Um, we had Mr. Kaler who taught biology. He was really funny. I've always responded to people who were funny. <laughs> Those are probably my absolute favorites when I was in high school. What did teachers typically wear professionally? The male teachers wore a dress shirt and ties and dress pants. They never wore like a dress coat. And then the women, they would generally wear dresses or a dress shirt and skirts. Um, or just pants. So as a student, what was expected of you? And did you come prepared? I, I mean, I did, but a lot, a lot didn't. But it was expected to be respectful, to pay attention, to get your assignments in. Yeah, I mean, to be prepared and to be pre prepared to learn. And there were few classes where I did get in trouble for talking. But for the most part, yeah, I would say that I was a pretty good student. How did you receive your books? We would go in to the class classroom each year at the beginning of the school year and they would pass out books and you would uh, get handed a book with a number. So every year, the first day of class, they would have a stack of books. They would hand you, everybody would get a book. You'd write your name in the front of the book and then each book was numbered. And then the teacher would have a list with a number. And then you wrote down what book number you had. What were some rules of your classroom? And what were the punishments? Did your te teachers have any discipline techniques? Some discipline better than others, or at least people paid more attention to others. In junior high, I, I believe some of the punishments were you had to stay after and you had to help the custodian. Some of them you had to write sentences. Then in high school, I know that there was detention. I didn't have to serve any. In junior high, I did. I had to write sentences because anytime I ever got in trouble was because I talked. That was like my biggest infraction was because I was a talker. Describe a typical school lunchtime. So when I was in elementary school, we would line up by grades and there were only, you know, six grades and it's small school. So it was whoever got there first, I believe. Then you would file through, you would hand the secretary your lunch ticket, she would punch it, then you would file through, you would get your food, you'd sit down, you'd eat. And then um, when we were in elementary school, you had to show the teacher your plate. And if you didn't eat enough, then you had to sit back down and you had to eat until she said that you had enough eaten. Then you could go outside and play recess. I hated, hated, hated that because I didn't want to be told what I couldn't, couldn't eat and I didn't like a lot of the food. So that was super stressful for me. I, I hated that. So generally you could, in elementary school, if you could eat everything but one thing, then you could, could go out. But if you left anything else, then they wouldn't let you go out. So you always tried, at least me, I always tried, tried to sit by somebody who would eat my stuff. So I could give, give away my food to, to other people. But if you got caught, then you were in big trouble. So in junior high, we would also go through the line and then get our food, sit down at a table. And I don't think that we were allowed to choose which tables we were, we sat at. I think we all kind of just had to file through and, and basically sit down with our grades. And then in high school, uh, we were in the cafeteria 
and we were, um, we could sit where we wanted to sit, but we, we'd have to go into the cafeteria and we would sit at a table and then our principal would come in and then he would point at a table and then we would be able to get up and go line up. And then that's how we would, would eat. And sometimes we would have maybe five minutes to eat or less because, you know, it was, it was a pointing system of, so basically you would get your food, shove it down your throat and like have to get to the next class. And it wasn't by any sort of expectation is just what he was feeling like that day. It didn't matter where you were sitting at in the lunchroom. It's just basically what he was feeling and how he was feeling about you that day. When you were older, did you have open campus lunch? No, never. How did you pay for lunch? I know you mentioned that there was a punch card system. How did that work? So in elementary school and junior high, I believe it was a paper ticket. And um, so they had had cash and then you would buy a paper ticket I think that you you kept a hold of the paper tickets if you lost it kind of too bad so sad and then in high school it was something that ran through the computer Mm -hmm. so it was purchased that way so I think you went into the office and put money on your card so was that a computerized card or was it a punch card still in high school no in, in high school it was a computerized card Did you ever bring your own lunch to school or did most people usually just have whatever the school provided? A lot of people did bring their own lunches. I wasn't really one of them. Sometimes I did, but generally it was more hassle than. What was a popular food when you were a child? Fruit roll-ups, I know, were uh, when I was small. Like that was like a new trend. I liked cottage cheese. (laughs) Like if I... If I could, if I would have lived on cottage cheese when I was a kid. Pizza was uh, popular. I liked the mashed potatoes from the school. That was probably my favorite was the mashed potatoes. I think that was a popular one because it's mashed potatoes. It was pretty hard to screw up. What was recess like during the warm and cold months? So recess was almost always outside. Mm. I don't think that we stayed out. I don't think that we mm. stayed in if it was like too cold or... I can't remember a time that we were ever kept in because it was too cold. I don't remember that really being a thing. Possibly. We were kept inside if it was raining. And if it was raining, then we could either play in the cafeteria or we would have to play in our classrooms, which was not ideal. Outside when it was warm, there were two different playgrounds. There was one for like the lower elementaries and that had more more things on it. So there was like a merry-go-round and there was a slide, swings, uh, teeter-totters, some other other things I can't think of right right offhand. And that was up until probably third grade. And then um, when you were one of the older elementary kids, then you went to the other playground and that had monkey bars. The other playground had monkey bars, but they were like low. And then the, the other side had high monkey bars and I don't remember what else there was because that's all I ever played with was the high monkey bars. Did your school provide any toys to play with either inside or outside like basketballs, footballs, board games, stuff like that? I think so. <laughs> like um, if we were kept inside, I think that they did. Not when we were outside that I recall. But again, I my, most of my time was spent on the monkey bars. So were there any forbidden games or activities? Um, I don't think so. And I'm going to go back to the, my previous statement because I know that for sure that we, there was a, at least one ball because we did do, play four square quite a bit. So at least there was a ball <laughs> that was out there. So when you were younger, did you have a nap time? That I remember. <laughs> okay. Um, so how did the school day end? The school day ended and then we the bell would ring and we would gather all of our stuff and we would just basically walk home and I would generally go up to my room and get my homework done and listen to music and that was about it. Did you ever have a lot of homework at night? Generally did just because I was in a lot of in a lot of classes Um, and actually when I was in junior high I was in I was in sports or in in some after school activities and then when I was in high school I was in a lot of clubs and activities. So the school did provide the what was called the late bus. So they had the after school bus and then they'd have the late bus, which would bring kids, what was it like 5.30 or 6 o'clock, I think. So after the activities were done, then they'd have like another bus that would run to the different towns and 
So I would have, I would write that one quite a bit. I know that you mentioned when you were in high school, they started to create dial-up internet. Did that change how homework was done? Um, yeah, the, there were different, you still turned everything in a hard copy, but you were expected to, you had different ways to look things up and to, to research things. So, yeah. Did your teachers ever ban Wikipedia or other websites as sources to use? They didn't really have Wikipedia when I was, when I was, uh, when we were starting out. Did cheating or plagiarism rules change as the technology did? Um, everything kind of, uh, kind of like rolled with it, but I don't, I think that was so new that that was something that was, they were trying to evolve with, but Hey Jeeves was, I think if I recall correctly, that was like the search engine at the time. So it was just a way that you could search things, but I don't remember exactly how it brought things to you. Yeah. Were some of your teachers resistant to the usage of technology in the classroom? Oh, I would say, yeah, a lot. <laughs> a lot were, especially like the old school ones who, you know, taught my parents. They had a much harder time adapting. Did you ever have to take ITBS, Iowa assessments, or any other type of standardized test? Every year we did. Uh, they were called Iowa basic skills. When did you start t- taking these tests? I feel like it was kindergarten, but I know it wasn't. So I think probably second grade. Were your scores fairly consistent or did they vary from year to year? Uh, I always had pretty high scores throughout my, my academic career. <laughs> How did you and your family feel about these tests? I liked them. Uh, I think that probably caused more stress to other members of my family, but I generally enjoy tests, so I didn't have a problem with them. Did you ever have to take a test to determine your aptitude or future job opportunities? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what job were you given as your future? Uh, I believe that I was given working in a museum. I think that was one of the things I was given. I I was given, I think, working in a library. I think something in travel. If I recall, but I think that there was like some really random ones too. And I was like, it's never going to happen, but I don't remember exactly. So those jobs lined up well with your actual goals or skills? Well, yeah, what I wanted to be. Yep. <laughs> and then what I actually ended up being. So, so did you ever have to take the SAT or ACT? Yes. I took the ACT when I was a junior. Did you take any prep classes or pretests? Probably. I, but I don't recall. Was it difficult? I don't remember it being super hard. I, I remember stressing out about it, but I don't think it was like uh, super hard. Um, and then after the test, my dad and I went to Jurassic Park. That was, and that was the last movie that we'd, we ever got to go to. So just, it was just the two of us. So did the SAT or ACT impact your access to colleges or financial aid? I think actually it did. I, I mean, I think that um, the scholarship pack package that I got probably was probably a little bit higher. I think that the college that I went to, I think that um, they didn't look at scores that were low. So I think that I was, I was fortunate that the score that I got was fairly, fairly high. What score did you get? I don't remember. I don't even remember what the (laughs) the ranges were. If you told me, I could probably, I think it was, it wasn't like, like high, high, but it was like pretty high. So, so what were some activities that you took part of in school that were extracurriculars? I was in art club and Spanish club and British club. And then I was in speech, um, individual and group, some sports. (laughs) I was in other clubs and groups, but I can't remember. (laughs) Did your school have any fire, tornado, um, or like code red or any other type of drills? Yes, we had, um, we had fire and tornado drills every year. Um, I think multiple times a year, Uh, at least for the, well, no, I would say at least once a year. I I don't think it was multiple, but we'd, we'd have fire and tornado drills. What were those like? The tornado drills, we would, do we have those in high school? I don't remember. But in elementary school, we would be taken to the other school. So we were in our elementary school. We had, it was one story and um, we were taken to, when we were younger, we were taken to the other class, to the other school that had the big gym because at the time they had the other basement. And so we were taken there and we were put on the stairs because there were stairs going down. And then... 
Um, we had books and we put the books over our head, which probably not going to be much. But then um, as we got older, I think that that building was more and more condemned because I didn't really keep it up to date or keep it up to code, I mean. And then I feel like we were put in the interior interior hallways and then we were just put up against the wall and then we had our, we'd have to put our head kind of like in our in our lap and then put a book over our neck and our head. Um, and then in junior high, we would, we would have to go to the lowest floor. And I think that that was, I don't think that there was a basement. I don't, I don't remember there being a basement, but we would have to do the same thing with the book and then high school, same thing. Hmm. So with our sturdy book that was going to save us all. <laughs> and then the fire we would have, um, depending on where you were in the building, you would go outside and have a meeting spot. Did you ever have any incidents regarding safety at your school or safety risks? That I'm aware of? I don't think so. <laughs> you were in school during the consolidation of your school, um, Fayette, with, was it Hawkeye? Uh, Hawkeye and West Union, because I've Hockey and West Union were consolidated when, like, way before my time. They were north high. And then um, when I was in second grade, they started talks of consolidating Fayette with that school and becoming North Fayette. I remember all the talks about it and changing the school colors and changing the school name because the school colors, when it was just north, was navy and gold. And then when Fayette's colors were cardinal and white. And then when we consolidated, it was going to be cardinal, navy, and gold. And then change the name. And there's some other things too, but when you're a kid, when you're very small, like those are the things that you grasp. <laughs> Do you have any particular memory from the consolidation experience? I just remember like some family friends um, of ours who were, his name was Sean Griffin. He was a senior, but he, he was a family friend and he was part of some of the students. He was a junior or senior and he was part of the the talks. And I remember just watching him, you know, getting up and talking and and being part of that the talks. And I thought that was really neat and, and being very amazed and wowed by that because it, it affected me, but I didn't realize how it affected me at the time. I just knew that it did. <laughs> How did student life change during and after consolidation? Well, it didn't affect me for quite some t for a few years because for us, we, our elementary school stayed the same. So we were pretty insulated kind of from the whole thing because like I said, our elementary school, we were, we all stayed the same until sixth grade. And then when we hit seventh grade, then we were bussed up to a different school, but um, up until sixth grade, we were we were the same. Then the class structure size didn't really change between? Mm -mm. So like my sixth grade class, we had 12 kids in my elementary class, which was 10 boys and two girls. So I mean, it was a very small, small class. So, and that was, and we had lost some students before sixth grade. So like in fifth grade, we had, we probably had like 14, but I mean, it was very small, very, very small, Ooh. small school. What was the difference from going from that small elementary school to then going to junior high? It was culture shock, like, because you have like a teeny tiny little school with essentially six rooms, um, six classrooms, and um, then a cafeteria. And then you have like the other school with, you know, where you, where you have your art and your gym and your uh, music and that's it. And then you go to this other place with three stories and a million kids, which is not, it was, it was small, but hundreds of kids where we had maybe, I don't know, I, I not very many, <laughs> not very many kids at all. So yeah, it, it was, it was definitely a culture shock. And then, and they all had their people that they knew. And like I said, like, with me, I had, there were 10 boys and two girls. And so like I had one other female friend and they didn't really keep us together. So it was, they kind of split us up. So I think that there were a couple, maybe one boy or two boys that were in my class because in junior high, you, you had like, you were put into a section and that section was put you know, we, you had the same classes all the way through the day. It wasn't like you had different classes. You were in the same class, like all the way through. 
So I didn't know anybody and being shy was not, was not a helpful, helpful thing. So, and it wasn't like I was super tight with the person that I was in the section with. So, and then all these other people were super close with people that they were put in with. So it was, it was kind of a hard thing. How did you feel about all of these new kids and how did you say they felt about you? I think that it was a new experience for everybody. Everybody was kind of feeling everybody else out. Like, you know, it was a new experience for everybody, but I think that definitely people went in with their people. And so trying to like get in to some different friendships and and to <laughs> worm your way into that was you know that's a little difficult but it was it did get easier but thankfully there were some opportunities to do that but it was definitely hard what was a typical school year-round schedule like like when did school start when did school end breaks that sort of thing when I was in elementary school, I want to say it started after Labor Day. And then the older I got, it seemed like the earlier it started. So like it started mid-August, late August. We never got a spring break. We would only get generally Good Friday off and then like the Monday after Easter. That was usually our spring break. I think that they probably do more now. It wasn't like we got a week off in, in Easter. We did get two weeks around two weeks off at Christmas time. We got Thanksgiving, we got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we were done by May or like the end of May usually. Those were like the big breaks that we got. And I think we got like Martin Luther King Jr. Day off. I think President's Day, uh, Labor Day Memorial Day, we weren't in school, Never mind. Um, Veterans Day, actually, I don't, it seems like we were in school Veterans Day because we always had a Veterans Day program. So we might not have had that off. So I, I'm not sure. During summer break, what did you usually do? I would play with uh, outside a lot. I had a friend who would visit his grandparents um, every summer and he would come live with them. Well, they lived right up the street from me. So he would come usually as soon as his school was done and he would stay pretty much all summer. And then he would leave at the end of the summertime. So that was something that we got to. So he, yeah, he would come and at least in elementary school, that was, that's what we would do. And we would just run all over town. And when I got older, I would go to my grandparents' house and my grandma and grandpa Miller, um, and I would help them out with their house and their yard and um, spend a lot of time with them. Obviously, you know, when I was older, then I'd have a job. I had, there was a family that I babysat their kids and when she was at work. So I did that throughout the summer for a couple summers. What did students around your community typically do during the summer months? Was that pretty typical what you did that they also would do or? I think so. I think for the most part, play, work, uh, chores. <laughs> did your school offer any class parties, like winter parties, fall festivals? Yeah, they kind of. Um, there was homecoming and then there was I think there's like a Valentine's Day dance and there was prom, obviously for when you're older. Junior high, it seemed like there was a few, but not very many. So just maybe like a few, but homecoming wasn't like the same as it is now. It was just like, um, there was like a dance and you wore something nice-ish. Um, and it was like right after the, the football game. So it wasn't like, it wasn't what like the second prom, like it is kind of now. It's, it was just, it wasn't like a formal, it was just, you wore something nice-ish. Um, when I was in high school, we had um, carnival festival kind of thing and each club had put, had a candidate. So I was a, one of the carnival queens and that was like a, a thing that we did and we had to do, um, it was kind of like a beauty contest, but not really. And then that was kind of fun where we had to put on a show and People uh, came and watched us do that, and we did the performance. And what were the average costs for prom and homecoming, specifically since homecoming was not seen as a formal dance? Minimum. Uh, I mean, just a nice dress. So, but not like a formal dress. So, whatever a nice dress was back then, uh, twenty, fifty dollars. I mean, it was just whatever you had in your closet. I, if you wanted to go get out and get a nice dress, you could, but it wasn't like it wasn't what it is now, and you didn't have to like run nobody had to run to for a tux or dress up like I mean they could wear like a, a, a tie and a nice shirt but again you didn't have to I think most people wore like a button-up shirt and then girls wore either a, a sweater and and pants or just a regular dress up dress um and then for prom you know that was the one where you 
would go and get the nice dress and get your hair done and hundred couple hundred dollars. I found I was pretty fortunate. Like I found some really nice dresses um, at a thrift store. So mine wasn't like super expensive and mine wasn't that expensive. <laughs> I think I, I got I got away with maybe $50. Were there any special events at your school that involved a larger community? Oh, like fundraisers, you mean? Anything like that, yeah. Oh, oh I'm sure that there was. And for homecoming, we would, um, the town would put on like the homecoming parade. So that would go through town. Then I know that they did do fundraisers for like booster club. Boost, um, we, we did stuff for boosters. And whenever the school had anything going on, they would do, you know, candy bars or whatever. I think one year, like they needed a new football something. And so they would, they did fundraisers for that. But I think that the the towns were pretty involved in the school. Was your school ever used for the building itself ever used for community events? They did have um, like a fall. They, I think they had like a fall festival where they would come up and they had um, like cakewalks and high schoolers helped with it. Um, they also had like a storybook walk where they used the high school and the high schoolers. They used the speech students a lot for different things with um, going into the different schools and reading or going into the nursing homes and, and doing that. Um, so... <laughs> Do you remember any major local, national, or world events that occurred during your school years? Yes, um, quite a few. The biggest one actually was when I was in elementary school, the Challenger exploded. And that was very traumatic for me, um, obviously. It was something that we were all taken into the um, multipurpose room, is what they called it. And that's where we had our lunches and sometimes we did gym in there. And they had Krista McAuliffe. She was um, a teacher and they, one of the things was they were going to have elementary students watch her and um, have her do lessons up in space. So they had elementary students all throughout the country watch the launch of the Challenger. So we were all sitting watching the launch of the Challenger and I remember sitting there watching it and all of a sudden it, it exploded and so, I mean, it's something that myself and I, millions of kids across the country watched explode live. Um, so I just remember that being, knowing that something really awful was going on and not knowing what, what to, you know, what was going on, but um, that everybody was screaming and crying and just watching this, this all happen. So yeah, I, that was a, uh, something that not only happened while you know during while I was like in school but it was like actually something that happened when I was in school watching it happen in school so that was that was a very traumatic thing that I'll probably always remember that was like the biggest okay. tra traumatic thing that happened to me while I was um, I'm sure that there's tons of other things that happened. Um, the Berlin Wall coming down, that, that happened when I was in, I think, a freshman in high school or um, late junior high. That was pretty big. Um, we had a German exchange student that came shortly after that. So um, I remember talking to him about that. That was, that was big. There was the Iraq War that happened when I was in high school. And my dad was in the military and I was really worried that he they were going to, he was going to have to be a part of that. So it was, um, that was, that was a fear that I had. What did you do after you finished school? Uh, after I finished school, I went to Cornell College in Mount Vernon, Iowa, and I actually had plans to be an archaeologist. So I did a lot of a focus on sociolo sociology and anthropology, but <laughs> turns out actually I became a librarian. <laughs> so that is that's where that ended. <laughs> Do you have a best or worst day of school? Probably the worst was the one I just told you about. That was pretty, yeah. that was pretty awful. One of the best ones is when we found out that we qualified for Allstate and we're going to Des Moines. That was pretty fun. That was pretty great. And we were the first team that had qualified for Allstate in years, years and years. So what are some comparisons or contrasts that you can think of from your own experiences and how that is compared to today's education system? Hmm. Okay, so um, 
I would say that things were a lot different because, you know, you didn't have the world at your fingertips, which can be good and can be bad. Like it's easier to have somewhat. I mean, it's, it's easier to have like everything that you can look up online, but however, it did teach us some skills that I don't think that kids might not necessarily know how to find nowadays cursive like cursive writing is another as another skill that is I feel kind of falling by the wayside my daughter learned it and she is 16 my son is 12 and he wasn't taught that when he was in school so I feel like that's something that is kind of important but since everything is digital that that's something that they didn't think was important and I feel like that is an important thing a lot of things are uh, like with the calculator and um, finding solutions. We were expected to find solutions without calculators and to know how to do certain things. And I think that, you know, today they still do have to do some things, but a lot of things you are allowed to use calculators or, which is actually as a parent, <laughs> like I will say that I do use uh, YouTube a lot when I don't know how to help my my kids with um, uh, math, especially. <laughs> And or I do uh, fortunately have also a wonderful brother-in-law who knows math, but when he's busy, um, YouTube is my friend. <laughs> so, or science stuff. So that is a, a parenting thing that I know that my parents didn't have that. So yeah, there's there's a lot of different differences that um, I see that I didn't have and there's good and there's bad, so yeah. So thank you so much for taking the time to interview with us today.